So, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm glad that you came up here, uh, or maybe you dozed off after this previous, previous uh, session. Anyway, um, I'm going to cover today uh, the following topics. First, uh, because uh, uh, you've heard many times uh, the term Codec uh, and Codex API, I'm going to give you a very short primer on, on the Codex API in Lucene 4, uh, which is the upcoming version of Lucene. Uh, then I'm going to show you that uh, uh, possible applications of this Codec API extend well beyond just mere coding of data. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the field level updates, uh, uh, index updates in Lucene. Um, about myself, uh, well, uh, I've been uh, using Lucene uh, uh, for various projects uh, for many, many years. And uh, I created uh, Look, uh, the index utility that uh, allows you to, you know, peek into how the, how the actual data looks like in the index, which uh, I'm told it's quite useful. Uh, I'm also involved in several Apache projects, uh, and I'm an ASF member. Uh, currently, I'm working uh, with uh, uh, Lucid Imagination, uh, working on the LucidWorks platform. So, the Codec API. Codec API is uh, basically about the data encoding and file formats on the disk. So, uh, sooner or later, you want to store your data, right? Uh, you're indexing, and sooner or later, the data has to hit the disk. So, in Lucene 3, 3.x, and before, this process was uh, more or less hard-coded. Uh, there were very, very little opportunities for customization. Uh, so, the, the data encoding was uh, fine-tuned to fit the particular type of data. For example, uh, postings were delta encoded and variable byte encoded. And um, uh, stored fields uh, were not really optimized. Uh, they were just, you know, written down as, as they were. And, and uh, various other tricks uh, were played with the data to minimize the, the size of the on-disk uh, data. But this whole process was more or less hard-coded. Uh, if you wanted to change something, uh, you were out of luck. Uh, the changes uh, would be massive, and they would be widespread uh, throughout many, many core classes in Lucene. So bas basically, nobody did it, uh, because it was so, uh, so difficult to do it. But in Lucene 4 and onwards, uh, we have this uh, uh, very nice API. More or less, uh, the, the, there were several people, uh, several uh, uh, Lucene uh, core team members that uh, uh, spent a lot of effort to extract all these uh, parts from Lucene that dealt with da data encoding and put them into a single abstract API. And this is very cool, because uh, it's a very easy to use uh, API and highly customizable. So, in Lucene, for uh, all data that is uh, written to disk and read from the disk, or actually written to directory and read from directory, uh, goes through this codec API, with some minor exceptions. So, uh, if you want to customize uh, the layout of your data on disk, uh, then you have to implement a codec uh, class. And this codec will provide several so-called formats. And uh, these are, for example, segment info formats, postings formats, uh, stored field formats, uh, term vector formats, doc values formats, and so on. Basically, each of these uh, classes here deals with a particular part of the index and determines how the data is actually written out to what files and what is the format of these files. So these formats, high-level formats, they provide consumers, uh, consumers in, in the sense that Lucene writes data to these consumers and they will end up somewhere, right? And uh, the counterpart to consumers, which is producers. Uh, producers produce data out of whatever, thin air, infinite span, or whatever. So you have these fields consumer, ter terms consumer, etc., etc. All these consumers and producers, in the end, uh, uh, expose an item level, uh, item granularity. So uh, for terms consumer, uh, you just uh, write terms to it, right? Uh, for postings consumer, you write just the postings data. So does it make sense? I think it makes perfect sense. And uh, really, the, the API is so simple that... Uh, you should try it. So, this uh, is where the codec coding craziness began. Uh, 
meaning that uh, it's now so easy to implement a new codec uh, that uh, everybody should try it, uh, just uh, you know, for fun, for experimentation. For example, one codec uh, is a simple text codec, which is, as the name suggests, uh, a codec that writes and reads data from plain text format. It's, of course, horribly inefficient, but very illustrative, very uh, educational. The Lucene 4.0 4 uh, codec uh, is a state-of-the-art codec, uh, and it would take me another 40 minutes to explain in detail what it does. Um, there are some other existing codecs uh, already implemented. Still many more are on the way. So um, they, they, they will provide uh, very modern algorithms for data encoding, like P4 Delta, uh, Simple 9, 16, uh, 64, 64, whatever. Uh, VS encoding, uh, um, you can put uh, additional structures on top of uh, existing data, like this uh, Bloom filtered uh, codec that uh, adds Bloom filters for quick lookup, uh, etc., etc. So all of a sudden, with the introduction, in, introduction of this API, Lucene became a very attractive uh, platform for information retrieval research and experimentation. So I encourage you. Uh, to implement your own index format if you have some nice idea. So this, this is kind of boring, uh, maybe. Um, uh, in the end, uh, are you interested really in, uh, in how the data looks like on the disk? Maybe, maybe not. But there are some other imp interesting applications of this codec API that became suddenly possible. For example, T codec. Again, the idea is very simple. Uh, you write your data not uh, in, to a single destination, but to multiple destinations in parallel. Very simple concept, right? Um, so uh, you have this T codec that writes the same data to uh, a destination that is defined as a, as a combination of directory and another codec. What this means is that you can customize uh, uh, the, uh, the layout and encoding of your data depending on the storage. For, for example, you may, you may want to have a different uh, uh, encoding on HDFS, on Hadoop file system, and different encoding on uh, uh, some uh, maybe relational database uh, uh, storage. Another, again, very simple concept, uh, but very powerful, is a filtering codec. Uh, there, is a, there is sometimes a need to get rid of uh, data that is not so crucial to, for getting the uh, correct top-end results from search. But the, that uh, spurious data uh, weighs down the index and uh, makes uh, man, all the other searches uh, take longer than, than necessary. So you can filter out data on the fly. Uh, there is another package in Lucene, uh, which is called pruning. Uh, and that pruning package uh, allows you to run this uh, filtering as a post-processing step on a static index. But it would be nice uh, to have the ability to do it on the fly. And that's what the filtering codec does. So if we combine these two, uh, uh, many other interesting applications become possible. For example, on the fly index pruning. We have the T codec that splits the, uh, uh, the data into two streams. And then we have the filtering codec that gets rid, uh, that uh, eliminates, uh, uh, let's say, uh, frequent words or uh, some postings uh, which have sm potentially small contributions uh, to the top end results. And then it writes this uh, minimized index to an SSD or to an in-memory uh, or a RAM directory. And uh, then we have the, uh, the appending codec that writes data to the Hadoop file system. And then we have a smart uh, component here that decides whether I want a, a quick, possibly incomplete uh, uh, answer fast or whether I want a complete uh, answer and I'm ready to, to wait. So that's one application. Another application is a single pass index splitter. Let's say you have a large index and it grows larger and larger and larger, and now you have to split it uh, into shards. Uh, well, uh, there are already existing solutions to do this, but they require multiple passes. So if your index is very large, then of course you have to pump uh, all this data, which means uh, a lot of I.O. multiple times, as many as there are shards. But if you use this T codec, uh, then you can do it once. Uh, filtering codecs uh, define what parts of documents or what documents end up in which shard, and everything just goes poof in one go. 
That's nice, isn't it? So, another application that I'm going to describe in more detail is uh, field level index updates. So currently, if you want to update a document in Lucene, um, well, you have to do uh, just that. You have to update the whole document. Uh, there are no field level updates possible. So, and what's more, uh, what's even worse is that uh, the document update is not really an update. You, what, what happens underneath is that Lucene first deletes the original document and then adds a new document with a different uh, internal ID. Uh, throughout this presentation, I will use uh, this concept of ID. So whenever I, I speak about ID, I'm not talking about a high-level application unique key or something like that. I'm talking about this uh, ephemeral integer numbers that identify uh, documents in a Lucene index, uh, or more precisely, in a single segment of a Lucene index. So, uh, update is really a delete plus add. So, you deleted an, a document and uh, its data, uh, in reality, doesn't go away. It's only hidden. It's uh, screened off uh, by this uh, special live docs bit set. And uh, this uh, means that uh, for, a, for a certain time, terms and collection statistics uh, are wrong because uh, if you, for example, updated only one field in a document but all other fields remain the same, then it means that uh, term statistics uh, are co counted twice for some terms. Yes, it will affect scoring. So, for example, uh, uh, if you have a, uh, a document that, if you have a very rare term, uh, then it will uh, uh, severely affect the scoring. For example, if you have a document with uh, KGB inside, right? and then you have uh, another document with KGB inside, then uh, all of a sudden the, the frequency of this term is twice as high as before, which is suspicious, right? Okay, so only after the, uh, this, uh, the segments are merged, actually this data is removed physically, and these uh, terms and collection statistics are corrected. So what are the problems with the current design? Maybe there are no problems. Well, uh, actually there are some. Uh, at least uh, for some use cases. First of all, uh, updates are only on the level of uh, whole document. So if you have large documents with hundreds of fields, and then you only have to you know, attach a small tag to a document, which is a change, then you have to reindex the whole document, which means you have to somewhere store these fields, either in Lucene or somewhere else. You have to reassemble the, this whole document again, and you have to um, send it to the index writer, and uh, all the index fields need to be reanalyzed, etc., etc. All of this process uh, has to be performed again. So this is very costly. This is very costly, for, especially for large documents with small changes. You can use some workarounds. There are some workarounds uh, for this. For example, uh, one common uh, um, advice uh, would be to use a parallel uh, reader. That's a special index reader that uh, takes two index readers and combines them sort of a, like a zipper, you know. Uh, it uh, matches uh, documents uh, with internally the same IDs so that they match each other and pulls, they, uh, pulls fields uh, from one and, and the other uh, index. The problem with this is that it's uh, really not trivial to get these internal IDs synchronized. Um, and, of course, for any update, again, you have to re rebuild completely this uh, parallel index. So that's, uh, that's not so good. Um, if you don't have to search on this field, there is a simpler solution. There is this, uh, in Solar, you can use external file field, which underneath produces a, something called value source, which you can use as a source of values, basically. Uh, primitive values, uh, like floating point numbers uh, or integers. Uh, and then you can uh, uh, perhaps use it as a source for function queries to affect your scoring this way. This doesn't require reindexing the main index. And of course, you can do various tricks uh, on the, at the application level. Uh, but all of this is sort of like a crutch. Uh, we would like to have uh, the true updates, right, if possible. Uh, something that, uh, okay, I say, 
I have to attach a tag to this document, and then I send only this tag, and then it becomes automatically attached. This uh, is uh, going to be messy. I really wanted to put a different picture here, uh, like that of a holy grail or something, you know, uh, very, very inspiring. But uh, this situation with uh, updatable fields uh, in Lucene reminds me rather of this situation, really. Uh, when you, uh, let's say, as a young father, are, uh, are tasked with changing a diaper, you know it's going to be messy, you know it's difficult, you don't know which end to approach, right? But you know you have to do it. So, let's do it. And... Uh, Let's take a look at how this can be done. There was a paper in 2008 uh, uh, published by a team of researchers, researchers from IBM, Vuk Ersegovac, Vanya Yosifovsky, Ning Li, and uh, uh, a few other people, that presented uh, the basic design for uh, uh, sub-document uh, updates in inverted indexes. And this paper uh, presented a very nice and simple idea, uh, at least in theory. Uh, in practice, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's more complicated. Basically, you have this uh, um, original data in the inverted index, and then you put uh, sort of tombstones, uh, like you say, kill this value. I have a newer version of this value. And then, using some magic process, uh, these new values are uh, merged with... Uh, with the, uh, with the original index. So uh, they, call it, they called it uh, overlay or stacked approach, uh, which makes sense uh, because uh, it's sort of um, uh, these new values would overlay or uh, screen off the old values. If you, know, if you want to know uh, more details, that's the reference to the paper. Worth reading, although hairy. So, my proposal uh, uh, for this uh, design in Lucene uh, is that uh, it should be as simple as that. Uh, of course, implementation uh, is going to be more complicated, but uh, the idea is sound. And uh, the goal of my proposal uh, was also to reuse as much as possible the existing concepts in Lucene. So, for example, uh, we want to represent field-level updates as simple documents because that's what they are. Uh, we want to update a field, then let's add a new document, which is marked as an update that contains just the updated fields, just the updated field values, not the whole original document. Of course, then we have to have a way of matching this new document with the old document, right? So it needs to have either a, an additional field that points to the original document, or it has to be, again, sorted so that the internal IDs match. Updates, uh, these, these documents uh, that form the updates will be written to separate segments. Again, your normal, regular, to see in segments. And on reading, uh, the data from these updates segment and from the main segment will be somehow magically merged. And the older data will screen off the, uh, the newer data will screen off the, the, the older data. Uh, this is a word of caution. Uh, this is a very much work in progress. Nothing is working yet. <laughs> so don't, uh, you, you need to set your expectations right. Uh, um, since every, uh, you know, IT presentation has to have a car analogy, uh, this is a car frame plus a pile of loose parts. It's not a working car yet. I'm counting on the friendly Apaches uh, to come in and save the day. So let's uh, take a look at uh, how the writing uh, of the stacked segments uh, would look like. Again, updates are regular Lucene documents with the added original ID. Uh, so the initial design would be that uh, uh, we go somehow through the index writer uh, that sets aside a group of uh, uh, components that are called document writers. Um, internally, uh, uh, you may or may not know, uh, index writer has a pool of document writers, uh, and each of them uh, creates internally a very tiny baby segments uh, in memory, and then after they are merged sufficiently so that they are sufficiently large, they are flushed to disk. 
So let's set aside a pool of document writers internally that handle only updates. So they have to be synchronized, of course, with the commits uh, and with the flushes from the main index writer. And uh, they, they would be stored in a different name, namespace from the main segments, and they would be referenced from the main segments so that we know uh, that, okay, this segment is not just your plain, ordinary Lucene segment, but it has some adjacent, another segment that uh, consi consists of updates to this one. Uh, that's as much as I have uh, about the writing. It's, as you, see, as you see, it's very much incomplete, and there are many challenges uh, to be overcome in this process. But more or less, it looks uh, straightforward. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are many hairy details here, but conceptually, it's uh, quite simple. So what about uh, reading uh, these stacked updates? Um, as you remember, uh, I said that we somehow need to merge this updated information with the original information. The only problem is that uh, the layout of this uh, uh, data looks very differently depending on whether the, uh, the uh, fields are simply stored values or whether they are inverted fields that are used for searching. So, one problem that we have is that uh, we would like to have the flexibility and freedom to uh, make these updates out of order. So um, let's say I want to update field one of document 10, and then I want to update uh, uh, field two and field three of document one, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. Completely random updates. But still, somehow, ne uh, they, they need to be merged with, with the original uh, segments. Um, there could be multiple updates uh, of a single document. Uh, let's say I, I updated one field, and then I realized that uh, this update was wrong, and I need to correct it. Uh, and of course, the, uh, uh, as soon as I flush this uh, uh, segment with updates, of course the internal IDs will not match unless uh, I pre-sort them, but this causes other problems. So either I do some smart ID mapping uh, on reading, uh, which costs uh, to, to retrieve and to match these, uh, these updated data, or I do uh, sorting on flush, uh, which uh, again costs to create uh, and then uh, as new updates arrive, basically I will have to uh, rewrite this uh, updated segments again and again. So what I decided uh, was uh, worth pursuing w was this unsorted stacked updates uh, approach, meaning that uh, updates arrive completely out of order and then uh, only we have in-memory ID remapping on reading. So we resolve IDs uh, at runtime, uh, whenever we need to read uh, the information from the primary and from the updated uh, segment. So uh, each document, uh, uh, each new document, new version of the document will store uh, this internal ID for the old document as an additional stored field. So in a sense, uh, we have this uh, uh, mapping, right? Uh, from new ID to, to the old ID. And then, uh, whenever I open this combination of old and new segments, uh, I invert this relationship uh, by, you know, sorting, inverting and sorting, uh, so that I arrive at a mapping from old ID to the new ID. And then I have uh, this map uh, that um, uh, I can use for lookup and translation on the fly. So, for example, whenever I want to iterate over documents, uh, I arrive at document number 10, and then I quickly look up uh, in the structure whether document number 10 has any updates. If yes, then I know that uh, the updates are stored in the new document ID here, right? So let's take a look at, uh, at um, the algorithm, how to actually merge this data uh, from, uh, for stored fields. This will apply to the stored fields only. Uh, this part. Later on, I will explain how to uh, do the similar trick uh, for inverted fields. So we have these funny looking uh, values. Um, I picked them uh, to illustrate later on that uh, when they are tokenized, uh, we can do uh, the similar way uh, matching in, uh, for inverted fields. So we have a set of uh, four documents uh, with uh, stored fields like this, right? And then we have uh, the uh, segment with updates. 
Uh, you see, as, uh, as we add these updates uh, sequentially, of course, they have different uh, internal IDs. Uh, besides, the, the internal IDs are valid only per segment, so they have no relationship with these IDs anyway. But we start the original ID, right? So we know that the do document ID number 0 has an update for document number 12 in the original segment and for field number 1. Does it make sense? Yeah, more or less. So based on this information, based on these two columns, uh, again, I can, I can create this mapping structure, right? If there are multiple updates, uh, I let the latest update win. So, for example, for document number uh, 10, I have uh, two updates for the field 1, right? So the latest uh, update wins. So in this table, for document number 10, for field number 1, I know that I have to read the, the information from document number 4. Here. So that's what I do, and in the end, I arrived at the stacked segment, the segment that has uh, stacked these updates on top of the old data. Um, that's uh, the same process, basically, in more detail, uh, uh, which I already went through. Uh, so we have this original document, we have the updates, uh, the latest updates uh, to the document 10 wins. Uh, based on this table, right? Uh, so whenever I want to retrieve all the, doc all the fields for the document 10, I check, uh, are there any updates to document number 10? The answer is yes. So I know, okay, for field 1, I need to take uh, data from number 4 here. For field 2, I need to take data from number 1 here. Which is, uh, by the way, the major cost of this approach. Because, uh, as you see, we are hopping uh, all over the place in this updates segment, right? So that's the major cost, the random seeking in, the, uh, in, in this uh, secondary index. What about the inverted fields? Does it look scary? I hope not, because uh, the next slide is more scary. So, uh, so we have the original segment. Uh, that's uh, how you can logically represent the inverted fields uh, in, in Lucene. So you have for field one, you have this term dictionary, A, B, C, D. That's the terms, right? Then uh, you have the postings for documents. And, uh, you know, for document number 10, uh, term A occurs at positions 0 and 3. Uh, for document number 10, there is no term C in field 1, etc., etc., right? So basically, what we want to accomplish with, uh, with the updates, we want to exchange or we want to replace the value of, uh, of a cell in this table, logically speaking. In, uh, in reality, this, uh, this works with enumerations. So again, we have the uh, inverted fields of the update segment. Uh, and uh, again, uh, let's say for field one, term A, in document uh, zero in the update segment, I have postings one and three, which, by the way, corresponds to the document number 12 in the original segment, right? I would like to use, uh, I would need to have some mapping structure, right? To map uh, from, the, from these IDs to, to these IDs. Fortunately, I already have this mapping structure, so I can reuse it. This is our mapping table uh, from, uh, from the previous slides, which is good. We, we have at least some data that we can reuse. Uh, so, um, Yeah, let's proceed here. Uh, again, for uh, field 1 and for document uh, number 10, we know that uh, these updates are obsolete because they are obsoleted by, by these updates, right? Which uh, follows from this table. Are you lost already? Are you with me? More or less? Hmm. Okay. So, uh, I will take a look at, uh, at uh, one row in a moment. So, based on this original data and uh, this data in the updates and this mapping table, I arrive at the updated inverted fields here. That's less scary, I hope. 
Uh, so, for field one, uh, term A in document 10, uh, I checked the uh, mapping table here. Yes, document 10 has updates. And I can see that updates for field one should be read from document number four. So for field one, term A, I read postings from number four here. And uh, this, the content of this cell says zero. That's the, uh, the, the term A occurs on position zero. So that's what I put here. And I discard all the other uh, obsolete data. Again, uh, you can see that the major cost of this approach is uh, uh, we have to follow this mapping table, so we have to hop around in this uh, update segment uh, doing random seeks. It's even worse than that, uh, because uh, this is just a logical model of, uh, that presents everything as a nice uh, random access table. The reality is much worse, because uh, all these enumerations, uh, all, these, all this data is available only as uh, one-way enumerations. You can only go from the beginning to the end, and uh, you cannot reposition these enumerations easily. So, um, yeah, some implementation details. Uh, as I said, uh, we have to extend segment infos to keep this association between the updated segments and the original segments. Um, there is a set of uh, uh, stacked codec producers that uh, are used to combine this data on the fly. And uh, that's, um, that's how it works. I, I mean, uh, the, we check first that uh, there, is an, uh, there is a segment with updates. If there is, we open both segments, and then we instantiate these producers, uh, and we also create this mapping table, which is an in-memory structure. So, uh, how to merge uh, field information? Let's say we have uh, field one and field two in the original index, but we have field three also in the updates. Well, that's very easy because uh, that's very little information. That's just a name, right? So, these, uh, this information uh, we can easily merge in memory. The problem is that uh, for posting lists, uh, uh, it's not so easy, uh, and for stored fields, it's not so easy, because we would have to uh, buffer everything in memory in order to resolve it. So, uh, we can't do this. Uh, instead, we use uh, something that I called leapfrog enumerators, um, which basically means that um, I, we have a... Uh, sorry, we have... Oh, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> leapfrog enumerators, uh, meaning that uh, first we init initialize both, both the primary and uh, stacked enumerator, and then we advance both. Uh, if we see that this one is larger, uh, then we keep uh, reading and advancing from the smaller. If they are equal, then we know that we have to merge the data uh, from the enumer enumerators, for example, postings. Then we advance both, and then again, we look uh, which one is higher. And we go, you know, like leapfrogging, uh, we go through the enum enumerations like this. This is uh, very similar to the uh, algorithm that is implemented already in multi-terms enumerations, but it's much simpler because we only have two uh, sources of, uh, of data. You may wonder what happens uh, if you want to merge these uh, segments. Uh, uh, after, after adding new, new documents, etc., etc., you know that, seg uh, that Lucene uh, periodically merges segments uh, into larger segments. Well, uh, it turns out that we don't have to do anything because uh, we took care of uh, screening off these changes uh, on, at lower levels uh, in the codec API, it turns out that uh, when it comes to the merging, this data is already, it looks correct already, because uh, the updates are hidden away uh, in these enumerators. So that's good. Uh, as soon as a merge occurs, the updates will be rolled in into the new segment, and then we can open just plain segment reader without any of these tricks. So this should minimize the, uh, the performance impact. Uh, what are the limitations uh, of this uh, design? Well, first of all, uh, naturally, there is a search time cost. If you have many updates, uh, then uh, uh, there is a random seek involved in this remapping on the fly, and of course, your, your performance will suffer. Uh, so for this reason, uh, it makes sense uh, to keep the, these updates to a minimum. Uh, 
or to a certain percentage of, uh, of the main index. Um, if we went uh, with, the, with the opposite approach, uh, with using sorted updates, uh, you know, trying to match the internal IDs uh, of the updated uh, segments with the, with the main segment, then we would have to pay the penalty uh, of resorting this updated uh, segment for every update, which would be probably even more prohibitive. Um, I also suspect that uh, it could be difficult to implement new real-time updates uh, this way. Uh, so that could be another limitation. Again, uh, you have been forewarned. This is not f still very far from being complete. So um, uh, we, need, we still need to evaluate uh, what, uh, what kind of approach would, uh, would be the best. For now, it seems that this um, on-the-fly remapping uh, is more promising. And uh, yeah, the, what I presented doesn't handle, for example, deletion of fields. Uh, maybe the, this could be easily extended to this, maybe not. So the current status, uh, there is a Jira issue, uh, Lucene 3837. There is a branch uh, in subversion that I need to update after the recent uh, changes uh, in the trunk. Uh, it's still very early stage. Uh, a lot of experiments uh, are needed, uh, but there is some initial code. Uh, your help is very much needed. If you have some ideas or have experience uh, uh, in uh, you know, coding Lucene internals, you are more than welcome. So, to summarize, uh, Lucene uh, 4 comes with a very nice API, the Codec API, which allows you to uh, customize uh, to a high degree how Lucene actually writes the data to directory and how it reads from, from directory. There are many interesting, cool applications that became possible with the introduction of this API. And uh, one of this, uh, these applications is uh, what I presented, this proposed design for the field level updates. Again, help very much needed. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Uh, I don't understand the sorted ID approach. Wouldn't that require a new updated document for every existing document? So that you couldn't have um, an updated segment without every document being updated? Uh, yes, uh, the, sorted, uh, the sorted approach uh, would require um, artificially stuffing, you know, empty data so that the uh, internal IDs will, uh, would match. Currently, uh, there are some places uh, in, uh, in Codex that um, don't allow you to, uh, you know, actually omit this data. You have to artificially stuff it uh, in. Uh, like, for example, uh, in stored fields, in stored fields uh, writer and reader, you actually, even if you don't have any stored fields, you have to uh, put a mark. Yes, there is a document with this ID that has no stored fields. So I, I imagine uh, something similar would have to be done for the sorted approach so that the IDs would match one to one. That would be also a cost, uh, an in memory cost. So what is um, the main reason that you choose this approach instead of make direct modifications to the original index? Uh, the reason is very simple. Uh, Lucene data is uh, read-only. It's basically write once. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a file, but uh, there are many, many um, uh, complications if you allow uh, touching this, uh, this data. So that's, uh, that's why we don't do it. Uh, uh, we, we, that, was, that was one of the major changes in Lucene 4, that segments are completely read-only. Uh, they are read, write once and read-only. Yeah, that's, that's also, uh, thanks Rand. Uh, uh, another, another, uh, another issue is that uh, if you add a field that, uh, if you add, a, uh, let's say, a, a text, uh, with multiple terms, and it's inverted, then it touches multiple uh, posting lists. So you would have to, you know, hop all over the place and update, you know, multiple places. Uh, that wouldn't do. Okay. 
No, it, it's not the, yeah. Uh, if you can. Uh, uh, if uh, I need to re-index data in Lucene when I migrate to Lucene 4? Uh, no, uh, Lucene 4 uh, provides a um, back, back, backward uh, compatible uh, implementation of Lucene 3 codec, so to speak, or at least it's, uh, it simulates uh, the encoding format uh, that Lucene 3 used. So yes, you can open um, um, indexes from uh, version 3.x, but you cannot write uh, indexes 3.x with, uh, with Lucene 4. As soon as they are merged, uh, you get a new index. Yes. Format. As soon as they are merged, uh, they, uh, they are ported uh, forward to, to the new format. Yes, what I don't understand is uh, why do doc documents in the different segments have different IDs? So, because uh, Lucene doesn't have um, um, uh, doesn't have uh, persistent IDs uh, for documents. Um, you may have uh, some application level uh, IDs like unique key, but this is uh, in reality just a stored field value. Internally, uh, Lucene uh, assigns. Uh, a uh, uh, sequential integer to documents. And uh, these uh, uh, sequential integers are ephemeral, meaning that they will change for sure as soon as you have a segment merge. Um, isn't that the reason for much of uh, the problems you have? So if you wouldn't change that ID, it would be much simpler, needing no mapping, you it's a trade-off. It's so a trade-off. Uh, I mean, uh, in engineering, uh, uh, there are always trade-offs. Uh, uh, the, uh, the bonus side uh, of this is that these internal IDs are very, very small. They can be very efficiently encoded, and they directly impact the size of posting lists. So that's why they are small integers. Wouldn't that m mainly depend on the deltas? So you could... Um, code it somehow that it wouldn't need so, so much space? That's a good question. And actually, with the codec API, uh, you can do uh, some experiments. You can implement a codec that uses uh, different IDs. Okay. I'll be hanging around, uh, and I'm available tomorrow as well. So if you have more questions, thank you. Thank you.